modular training, a presentation given by Ori Pomerantz to members of the IBM Security Center of Excellence for SWAT and course development. Notice that even though I'm an IBM employee, these are my own opinions and they do not represent in any way, shape or form opinions or recommendations by the IBM Corporation. Objectives, why should you even listen to me? Because when you complete this presentation, you should be able to explain the advantages of modular training and why we're transitioning to it. Given a list of objectives, identify the opportunities to make modular enablement, to modularize a class, and of course, last but most important, write modular enablement material. What's wrong with the way we're doing things right now? The, right now, most of our enablement is generic, how to do stuff with these product classes. And we have to assume no starting knowledge. Why? Because while we can list prerequisites, you can, they aren't always followed. Companies that provide training aren't going to turn away paying customers because they didn't manage to pass an exam on the prerequisites. The real prerequisite is that the check has to clear. However, most of our customers, sorry, most of our students do know something about the product. Very often, they have already been sold the product, they've already been through a proof of technology or proof of concept, they've been through an implementation project, and now they're towards the end of the implementation and the handoff of responsibility from the IBM or business partner services people who did the implementation project to the administrators who will handle the product on an ongoing basis. Also, they might be new hires in a company that already uses the product. They worked for a few months in that department and then they decided to send them to training. Another problem with the classes we have now is that we focus on what we think is important. Why? Why don't we teach everything? because we only have five days maximum for a class. You can't teach everything about, our product, about any of our products in five days because they are somewhat complicated, not because they're badly designed, but the problems that they solve tend to be really complicated and we can simplify it as much as possible, but we can't simplify it any further than that. Also, different companies use different subsets of product features and of course the people don't care about the product features that they don't use and they don't see themselves as likely to use in the near future. Also, while we teach installation and configuration, usually, not always, but usually, that is done by IBM or a business partner. So again, for most people, that's wasted time. What is the solution? Modular education. Create self-contained modules that can be combined as needed. This means that no module that other than one or two modules, you don't start from scratch. So you have to list prerequisites and our business partners are going to have to start taking them seriously. Maybe not for the initial intake, but for the train, <coughs> but when they combine modules. Also, of course, objectives, what people are going to learn, and materials that will get them from one to the other. Our global training partners can then decide what classes to create out of these modules. Why do they do it? For one thing, they're closer to their customers, they listen to them, they try to sell them on classes, so they know what their customers need, hopefully better than we do. Also, right now we have several global training partners and they teach exactly the same classes. This means that they have to compete on price and schedule. Not necessarily all that great. Companies like to differentiate their offerings and this way they'll be able to do it. For example, G global training partner A here might decide to teach a three to teach a class that would teach that would be initial use of blah 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 first do the installation and configuration then 
basic use of the product and reading the log file for very basic troubleshooting. On the other hand, business partner B might decide, okay, we're going to do a simpler, we're going to do a different class. For people who are already using the product, it will be called troubleshooting of product name, and we will teach them the reading the log file module and then the troubleshooting module. The delivery we plan is the same mechanism we use today, lectures and exercises, and for more advanced materials, we may also use self-enablement, which again, as we do today, as demonstrations, white papers, articles, etc. This is pretty much up in the air, but let's try to look at our products and see what we can actually turn into modules. Every module starts with students unable to do X and then ends with them being able to do it. X should be something useful. You shouldn't have a module that ends in an intermediate step unless that is a step that is required for multiple modules, in which case you pretty much have to do it simply so that you'll only teach how to get to that intermediate step once, even if you teach multiple of those modules. For our product, this is the way it would typically work out. First, we have installation and configuration. That needs to be a module. It needs to be available, but it's mostly going to go probably for services, people. Internal enablement, business partner enablement. Then there is the basic function that our product is built around. That is going to be necessary pretty much for everyone except people who happen to already know it. Then we have a number of features that tend to be refinement of the basic use of the basic function or additional features that you use while you're doing the basic function to solve particular problems. These here are features one, two, three, and four. And of course, we also might have advanced features like 4A and 4B here that require you to have already, to already understand one particular feature or several particular features like 4B and that we also need to teach. In that case, we'll we'll want to do fi the feature itself as a prerequisite because sometimes people only need the feature without the advanced feature that builds on it. This is pretty theoretical and as course developers I'm sure you know that an ounce of application is worth a pound of theory. So let's look at the Apache HTTP server which is one of the most well-known uh, products out there, even though it's not an IBM product, and see how we'll divide that into modules. Some people in the organization might would need to be able to install and configure new web servers, so that's a module. Then we have another module for serving static web pages, because almost everybody involved with the product is going to need that. Also, we have administrators that will need to do troubleshooting. They need to know how to read and interpret the log file. Web designers and web developers need to know how to write HTML. So that will be a feature. And writing PHP pages is going to be another module that only the web developers might need to go through, not the web designers. And finally, if we are using PHP, somebody needs to know how to install that the Apache module for the interpreter. So that will be its own module. The reason that we put PHP under HTML here is because you some people only need to learn how to write HTML. Some people need to learn how to write HTML and then how to write PHP. If we are doing Apache for web designer for web designers, then we don't want to waste their time with PHP. Virtual machines and the lab exercises. 
we have a problem that not all of our delivery platforms support snapshots, which would make it difficult for us, which means that we can't just have one virtual machine and have snapshots for the beginning of each module. How are we going to deal with that? We, we should try to share the same virtual machine between as many modules as possible. We'll start with the basic functionality available. To go back to the Apache example, we'll start with it already installed, so we'll be able to serve static web pages. This allows us to teach the basic functionality and the features that go directly off of it, reading the log file, writing HTML, and the PHP interpreter. If possible, and in the case of the PHP interpreter, it may or may not be possible, have intermediate features configured to allow us to teach the advanced features. When we teach programmers how to write PHP pages, we don't necessarily want them to first have to install the PHP interpreter. So what are the tricks we can use to simplify this? We could, to change between modules, we can use a script to create the entities that will be needed in that particular module. For example, maybe we start with the PHP interpreter not installed. So we can do the PHP interpreter installation module, but then we have a script that you fire it off on that virtual machine and it does everything needed to install the PHP interpreter. So you can do that at the start of the writing PHP pages module if you don't also teach PHP interpreter installation. For installation and configuration, there are a number of tricks we can use. We might be able to install the product, just do it in a separate directory, use a separate LDAP suffix, etc. So the new installation we're doing won't step on the existing installation. Also, it might, if we can't do that, we might need to uninstall the product and then reinstall it for the installation and configuration. That is somewhat ugly, but it might not, it might be the best solution. And if all else fails, we could have two images, one with the product installed for the other modules, one without the product installed, just for installation and configuration. Again, that is ugly, it's a problem, but if that's what we need to do, that's what we need to do. How do we deal with product enhancements? Our development is working, is moving towards agile development, which means that their product, our products are going to change frequently. When you have new code, you have to update modules. You need to, at the very least, verify that the labs still work as exercise, as uh, specified. You may need to rewrite the labs. And if anything changes in the GUI, you need to retake screen captures. Problem. We are not such a huge team. We will not have time to, read you, to redo all of the modules all of the time whenever the product revs. No, maybe we will at the beginning, but once we have a large enough number of modules, not going to happen. So the best we can do is we'll create a new image for each revision. We'll write modules for new features and for existing modules, we'll update them as needed or every few image releases, which of course means that we need to make it very, very clear to our instructors and students which image goes with which module. Probably start e the exercises for each module with run this command, see if this is your output. If not, you are using the wrong image, get the right one and then do it. Another issue is the narrative structure. In theory, narrative structure is not an issue. We don't write fiction. What we write is non-fiction, or at least it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be factual, not emotionally satisfying. In practice, though, narrative structure is always an issue. Students can pay attention to the lectures and they can do the exercises. They can also not do that. Nobody ever got thrown out of a paying class 
I think just because they did, they weren't do, weren't listening. Emotionally satisfying materials are a lot more likely to hold people's attention, and therefore they are a lot better. In our traditional training, that is pretty easy. We explain the bur the purpose of the product, the business problem we solve, then we install it, we configure it, we use it, and we so we show how it solves the main business problem, and then we do various variations on the problem and their solutions. In short modules, this is a lot more difficult. Why? No module gives an entire picture of the product. If we could do, if we do the entire picture of the product, then it's not modular education. It's pretty much our all exist, our entire existing class. This makes it very easy to fall back into feature function training when we tell them, okay, this feature does this, this feature does that, this is how you use this feature that does the other thing, and people start yawning. Not a good solution. So, how are we going to solve it? Remember that every module answers a question. At the start of the module, you should ask the question explicitly in a lecture slide, possibly with a scenario. During the module, you should reinforce the scenario if possible. You can't always do it, but if you can add a few sentences here and there, that would make it work better. And close with the scenario concluded successfully in an exercise showing that the added functionality is now there. This has to be an exercise, by the way, not a lecture. Our typical method of teaching is lecture exercise lecture exercise but if after a exercise we have another slide that belongs to the previous lecture really instructors will just skip it after the exercises you usually give a break nobody will pay attention so you want to conclude the ec the scenario with the students managing to do it now an example of narrative structure in the lect let's talk about PHP interpreter installation. In the lecture, we'll say that there's an application that the enterprise supposedly needs. Then we'll talk about how we'll do it, what is PHP, and why is it important in the LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP stack, the stack of open source products that we as IBM don't like that much because there are no IBM products here, so we don't get paid, but the customers in the real world like it. Apache modules and how to install them. And finally, how to verify that PHP works. In the image, before the students do the exercises, you will want to have a pre-configured MySQL database if the application needs it. And because PHP doesn't allow easily for internal state, almost all uh, PHP applications are going to need a database the installation files for the application, and of course the Apache module for the PHP interpreter. In the ex then, when the students do the exercises, they get to install the PHP Apache module, verify, that this, verify this module with a tiny Hello World program, and then we do a, do a couple of exercises that appear to be redundant, installing the application, verifying that the application works. In theory, that's a waste of time in a module that is install the PHP interpreter, but in the real world, people are going to want to install application on top of it anyway, so it is worth doing. And that's it. If I did a good job, you can now explain the advantages of modular training. Given a list of objectives, identify the opportunities for modularity and write modular enablement material. If I did a bad job and you still don't understand something, you have my email in the first slide. Email me with any questions or comments. Thank you.